During his stay in Australia, John Lennon was startled to hear a knock on his room window. There were eight floors, and a fan from Liverpool had climbed in the dark, just holding onto the pipes. Moved by the feet, John Lennon invited him in, bought him a drink, and presented him to the band. When McCartney moved to Cavendish, he hired the Kellys as house butlers. But when he found out that they had written an article about Paul's domestic life and sold it to the press, he had no choice but to fire them, claiming disagreements in the organization of the house as an actual dismissal. McCartney soon changed butlers, and weeks later, the mills were added to his services. In 1966, the band received an invitation to perform in South Africa, but Lennon and the band refused due to the racial segregation laws in the country. With tensions running high over Lennon's comments about Jesus Christ, a few weeks later, the Beatles were censored in that country. On February 19 of 1967, George and Patty were at a wild party at Keith Richards' house. In the early hours of the morning after Harrison had left the party, the police intercepted Richards and arrested him for drug possession, along with Mick Jagger and Robert Fraser. Speculating that the police waited for Harrison to leave so as not to arrest someone who was part of the Order of the British Empire. In December 1969, John and Yoko landed in Toronto for different activities. One of them was to send a message of love to the whole world, staying at their friend Ronnie Hawkins' house. They started calling radio stations all over the world to take their message. The surprise was that they left without leaving a single dollar, and Hawkins had to pay the expensive phone bill. In December 1969, Lennon was invited to participate in the movie Jesus Christ Superstar, but due to his controversies with the character, Lennon refused. Finally, the voice of Jesus Christ was that of Ian Gillen, singer of Deep Purple. Speaking of Jesus Christ, McCartney tells in his book, Many Years From Now, that Jesus knocked on his door one day in 1967. McCartney invited him in, and then took him as a guest to one of the Sgt. Pepper's sessions. Who is this man? asked his mates, and Paul told them, he says he's Jesus Christ. The Beatles were never in favor of playback, but they did it if it was really necessary. Being their first appearance with this technique on November 25th of 1963 in Manchester, where they performed I Want to Hold Your Hand and This Boy. When the Beatles played in Paris in 1964, they realized something unique in their short career. There were more boys than girls in the audience. This made them play more comfortably, not because of the genre, but because there was no screaming to break up their sound. Ringo Starr's debut as an actor was at the age of six. Before entering the hospital, he had a small role in the school play The Emperor's Carpet. Ringo himself says he felt that magical sensation when he was on stage. Contrary to popular belief, the first time Paul heard Harrison play was at school. He heard someone playing raunchy behind some bushes, and although they didn't share classes, they used to take the same bus, so it was easy to establish communication. The Beatles never won a talent contest or battle of the bands. On July 20th, 1957, Paul McCartney was invited by the Quarrymen to come on stage to play with them. The song was Guitar Boogie, but it all went wrong because they gave him a right-handed guitar, and he was left-handed. On August 7 of 1957, the Quarrymen debuted at the Cavern Club, but were kicked out mid-performance because rock and roll was not allowed at the time. The first guitar that George Harrison owned was bought secondhand by his mother and cost three pounds. Months later, Harrison exchanged it for a Hofner guitar, and today, this first guitar is valued at over $800,000. During 1958, the Quarrymen had a pianist, John Lowe, he always left rehearsals in the middle because his father wouldn't let him come home late, so he had to be fired from the band. The first song that John Lennon learned to play on guitar was That'll Be The Day by Buddy Holly. Before being the Beatles, the band had other names, such as Johnny and the Moondogs, the Nurk Twins, the Silver Beatles, the Silver Beats, and Long John and the Silver Beatles. In 1960, the British government abolished the compulsory military service that had existed since 1939. Harold Macmillan, who was in charge of the decision, was declared a national hero, for if this law had been followed, it would have been very difficult for the Beatles' paths to have crossed. McCartney spoke of this years later as a miracle. In 1960, the Beatles were hired by Alan Williams to play at the Jacaranda. Their pay consisted of toasted bread and coke. Before leaving for Hamburg, the band made two important decisions. First, they would include a new drummer, Pete Best, who in fact was the only one who auditioned, and second, and more importantly, they left with a new name change. From then on, they would be formally called the Beatles. The group's first week in Germany was catastrophic. They had no pay and survived thanks to loans from Rosa, the Indra cleaning lady. At some point in their career, the Beatles had to play in a strip club, where they played while the models stripped naked. Playing at Lantham Hall, the Beatles witnessed a general brawl that caused Stuart Sutcliffe to lose consciousness, which may have caused him to develop brain damage that would kill him years later. Already established at the Cavern in 1961, George Harrison's mother was a regular listener to the band's performances, who watched with enthusiasm and supported her son. 
John's Aunt Mimi had contrary opinions and went to see them on sporadic occasions, as did Jim McCartney, Paul's father, who despite supporting his son, did not go to the cavern much because of the bad ventilation and the smell of the venue. The first great sign of the Beatlemania phenomena was on February 14, 1961, celebrating St. Valentine's Day. During a performance at the Casanova Club in Liverpool, they raffled a button and a kiss from the band for the winner. When the winner went up, the fans got out of control and wanted a kiss as well, before the security personnel intervened to help the band to leave the place. Paul McCartney's famous Hofner bass was a mid-range instrument that he bought for £30 cash. Unlike his bandmates, he couldn't take out credit for a more expensive instrument. On December 3rd of 1961, Brian Epstein summoned the Beatles to propose to them to be their manager. However, everything was almost ruined due to Paul's unpunctuality, who was taking a bath. However, Brian's patience was the key to not quit that day. After the meeting ended, Brian told the band, I will make you famous, to which a sarcastic Lennon replied, No, Brian, we will make you famous. Focused on their image, Brian Epstein was in charge of changing the group's look from leather to casual suits being their main characteristic during the first stage of the group. In 1962, Liverpool's Mercy Beat magazine named the band as one of the most popular in the region. However, they made the mistake of presenting their members wrongly, being Paul McCartney as the wrong one, as his last name was spelled incorrectly. In 1962 in Liverpool, the group The Scaffold was formed by Michael McGear, who was Paul McCartney's brother. Michael had changed his last name so as not to get hung up on his brother's fame, and with his own merits, they got a number one in the 70s, being to this day a cult group. The successful German album My Bonnie was performed by Tony Sheridan, accompanied by the Beat Brothers, a group that was formed by George, John, Paul, and Pete Best. Sheridan was the only musician in the world who enjoyed a recording with the Beatles as a backing band. In August of 1962, John Lennon married Cynthia Powell in a clandestine manner. As neither Brian Epstein nor EMI wanted to turn one of their youthful references into a married man, in January 1963, during a trip from London to Liverpool, the band they were driving broke a window in the middle of the road. The Beatles slept on top of each other for warmth, while Mal Evans had to put a plastic bag over his head, a feat that was fondly remembered by everyone. In April 1963, Paul, George and Ringo vacationed in Tenerife, while John and Brian vacationed in Barcelona. During this trip, Paul McCartney almost died by drowning. According to the story, he was saved almost by miracle. In mid-1963, the telephone lines with the Beatles' surnames were saturated with questions and mails. The most affected was a journalist named George Harrison, because he received hundreds of things from people who thought he was the mythical Beatle. On October 14, 1963, the term Beatlemania was born for the first time in the media, thanks to Sandy Gardner, due to the madness that a previous concert had caused in London. Ed Sullivan's first contact with the Beatles was while at Heathrow Airport, where he coincided with a flight of the band. Seeing the crowds the band was moving, put them on his map. In December 1963, the Beatles had a tedious Christmas tour that put them in uncomfortable positions, where they had to dress up as Santa Claus and hang out with children. Before playing on the famous Ed Sullivan show for the first time, George Harrison fell ill, so he was not present at the band's famous photo shoot in Central Park, and was almost replaced by Neil Aspinall for the TV appearance. There were campaigns in 1964 by the US media to stop the band. The most famous was the Detroit campaign, which argued that they wanted to finish with the Beatles, to which John Lennon replied, we want to finish with Detroit. In March of 1964, the Beatles recorded two of their songs in German. The result was not the best, and Brian decided not to record the Beatles in another language again. During the filming of Hard Day's Night, George Harrison met model Patty Boyd, who years later would become his wife and inspire great songs like Something. The literary debut for a member of the band was in March of 1964, when John Lennon published his book in his own right, which sold more than 40,000 copies in just 24 hours. During the band's final concert sequence in A Hard Day's Night, the Beatles had 350 extras for the film. Among them was a 13-year-old boy who would eventually go by the artistic name of Phil Collins. During 1964, Ringo had lung problems that hospitalized him in London for a few days. With the year full of commitments, Jimmy Nickel was chosen for his replacement, and for 13 days, he lived the dream of being a Beatle. During their 1964 tour, in Seattle, the Beatles were transported in an ambulance. The police kept them off stage for an hour to control the audience, and barely playing, they thought the concert would get out of control. The police asked to stop the show, and the band ignored it, and continued playing. Then, a policeman took George Harrison off the stage by force, causing anger in the band, who had to stop the concert for a few minutes. Gene Dixon had predicted the death of Kennedy gaining great credibility among Americans. 
Sometime later, she said the Beatles would die in a plane crash, saying that three of them would die and another one would be seriously injured, which fortunately never happened. During the Bahamas sequence in the movie Help, the band wore light clothing in keeping with the tropical climate of the island, but they were actually freezing to death because of the season in which they were filming. Following the film, Paul McCartney later stated that during the Another Girl sequence, the four Beatles were under the influence of marijuana. Pete Shotton was a close friend of John and a member of the Quarrymen. Despite his poor musical skills, he was in the band until he was fired, and his relationship with the Beatles was good, despite the fame, and in 1965, John Lennon bought him a supermarket so he could make a living. Arriving in Spain for their 1965 concert, the band was invited to a bullfight, to which only Ringo agreed. The bullfight was one day before their concert, but Ringo had a bad experience, saying that he had collapsed by the violence of the bullfight. When they arrived in Houston for a concert, they realized that the police had forgotten to cover them, so the fans literally threw themselves at the plane and had to be taken out with a crane. Chris Farlow, founder of the Thunderbirds, noticed that Paul McCartney had left a recording at his house. McCartney had left him a song and wanted him to record it because he thought the style was not appropriate for the Beatles. Chris, a little dismayed, also felt that it did not go with the style of his group, and after consulting with his friend, Eric Burden, decided to tell Paul that he was not interested. That song was yesterday. When the famous Beatles cartoon series came out, the producers did not consider it a problem that the accent of the dubbing actors was from Liverpool and the children from North America had difficulties to understand certain things. In Cleveland in 1966, and during the center of the Lennon and Jesus Christ controversy, the Beatles performed in front of 20,000 people on a stage for 60,000. And to make matters worse, it started to rain, causing riots between fans and police. So to avoid a riot, Brian Epstein canceled the concert. The Beatles' mustaches were born for two reasons. George Harrison wore it as a disguise while taking lessons from Ravi Shankar, while Paul did it to hide a scar from a motorcycle accident. John and Ringo just followed. The marketing for the band was enormous during the 60s. Practically everything was given concessions. For example, the Beatles received $140,000 in royalties from chewing gum alone. The first solo work released by a Beatle was The Family Way, the soundtrack to the film of the same name, composed by Paul McCartney and George Martin. At the end of 1966, and marked by the band's inactivity, John Lennon went to Spain to make a movie. And there, he composed the song, Strawberry Fields Forever. To close the year in 1966, George Harrison, Eric Clapton, and Brian Epstein were turned away from a club for not wearing a tie. So, they decided to leave the place and party somewhere else. During the last details in the recording of the Sgt. Peppers, Ringo collapsed. One version says that Evans badly let him down, while another says he fell on his drum kit. In 1967, Frank Sinatra blamed the Beatles for the degeneration of music and youth, and years later, he rejected a song that Paul McCartney had written specifically for him. Brian Jones played saxophone on the song You Know My Name, which is Paul McCartney's favorite song for his entire discography with the band. London Radio was a cult pirate radio station among young people, and before its closure in 1967, Ringo recorded a farewell message marking a milestone in the history of British radio. George Harrison lost his virginity in Hamburg while the rest of the group spied on him. And when he finished, everyone applauded him. Lennon and McCartney once started working on a play called Pilchard about a guy who thought he was God, but they never really finished it. Paul McCartney, Pete Best, and George Harrison were deported from Germany during their first residency in the late 1960s. Harrison for being a minor, as he was only 17 years old, while McCartney and Pete Best for setting fire to a condom in their room. To write Maxwell's Silver Hammer, Paul was inspired by a Vatican ritual where a cardinal hits the deceased pope on the forehead five times with a hammer to make sure he's dead. The last time the four Beatles recorded together in the same studio was on August 20th of 1969, where they worked on I Want You and She's So Heavy. John Lennon said that Ticket to Ride was one of the first heavy metal singles in history. At some point, Ringo seriously considered emigrating to Texas to become a country musician. When the Beatles asked Shirley Temple for permission to use her image on Sgt. Pepper's, she was the only celebrity who insisted on listening to the record before granting permission. She's Leaving Home from 1967 infuriated the American far right, who thought the song promoted abortion, but had nothing to do with it. Speaking of the same song, it was actually inspired by a story from the Daily Mail, which told of 17-year-old Londoner Melanie Coe, who had run away from home, but was found living with her boyfriend the following week. Although there is an Eleanor Rigby in Woolton Cemetery, she's not really the person who inspired the song. The Rigby part was inspired by the name of a women's underwear store, and the Eleanor part was in honor of Eleanor Braun, the actress who appears on Help. Good morning, good morning, 
was written by Lennon after he was upset at a television commercial for Kellogg's Corn Flakes, and it's also believed to be a response to McCartney's song, Good Day Sunshine. At Lennon's specific request, the animal noises that appear in Good Morning are in hierarchical order. For example, the order in which the beasts would eat each other. The Beatles were inspired for their first single, From Me to You, by a British magazine, which in its letter section said, From You to Us, inspired by writing a song on a bus during a tour supporting Helen Shapiro. Ringo wrote the song Octopus's Garden after a boat trip on vacation in Sardinia. The ship's captain told him how octopuses take shiny objects from the seabed to build gardens, and during the trip, Ringo refused to eat octopus. During their 56-night residency in 1960 at the Kaiser Keller in Hamburg, the band played four sets every day, from 7.30 to 9 p.m., from 9.30 to 11 p.m., from 11 to 1 a.m., and from 1.30 to 2 a.m. That was seven days a week. So the Beatles used pills to keep them from collapsing due to fatigue. At their first recording session at Abbey Road on June 6, 1962, George Martin gave a long list of things that were wrong with the band's performance. And in turning to the part of the band's opinions or comments to Martin, George Harrison began by saying, For a start, I don't like your tie. The Beatles' concerts and even screenings of their films often smelled of urine, as Bob Geldorf recalled for Q Magazine. I remember looking at the cinema floor, and there were these rivers of urine in the aisles. The girls were literally peeing from excitement, so I had to associate the Beatles with the smell of urine. In Enemy magazine, in early 1963, the Beatles listed their ambitions. Lennon wanted to write a musical. McCartney wanted to have his picture in the dandy. Harrison wanted to design a guitar. And Ringo Starr said he just wanted to be happy. McCartney played some guitar solos on songs like Taxman, Back in the USSR, and Good Morning, Good Morning. When someone complimented Harrison on these songs, he would say, I didn't play that. The Beatles took more time to make Yellow Submarine than it took to record their entire first album. Strawberry Fields Forever took 55 hours to record. It's made up of two completely different recordings, each of a different mood and different tempos. The first recording, Take 7, had been performed in B-flat major, while the second, Take 26, was in C major. Against the odds, Martin and engineer Jeff Emmerich found that by slowing down Take 26 by 11.5%, the tempos and keys of the two versions matched perfectly. Lennon, McCartney, Starr, Martin, and Mal Evans simultaneously played the famous final chord of A Day in the Life on three separate pianos. Lennon wanted Hitler to be included on the cover of Sgt. Pepper, but in the end, it was cancelled at the last minute. Among Apple's abandoned ideas was a film adaptation of The Lord of the Rings, something that no one fully achieved until Peter Jackson took on the project, the same director who made the band's recent documentary, Get Back. Lennon said a lot of strange things during interviews in 1969 and 1970, where in one of them he said, I'm sorry that Yoko wasn't my daughter. I don't like the idea of her being born in someone else's womb. John Lennon changed his middle name from Winston to Ono after marrying Yoko in 1969. The BBC banned several Beatles songs such as I Am The Walrus, Fixing a Hole, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, and A Day in the Life. The Beatles were going to do the voices of the vultures in Disney's The Jungle Book. Even the characters were inspired by them. But at the end, the band rejected it. There's no way we can sing for Mickey Mouse, John Lennon said. While traveling on tour, John and George stayed together while Paul stayed with Ringo. Yoko reportedly did not know that John was a Beatle when they first met. Another Liverpool band that played at the Hamburg Circle was Rory Storm and the Hurricanes, where they had Ringo Starr on drums, who used to sit in and play with the Beatles when Pete Best couldn't be there at the time. When the Silver Beatles went on tour backing Johnny Gentle for 10 days in Scotland in May of 1960, they adopted stage names. John took the name of Long John, George Harrison took the name Carl, in honor of Carl Perkins, and Paul changed his surname to Ramon. Years later, in an homage to McCartney's touring pseudonym, Doug Colvin changed his name to Dee Dee Ramone and convinced the other band members to join him and called themselves the Ramones.